happens. Wait, wait, wait. yeah, okay, you go back to get started. <clears throat> Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Zims, and welcome to Top 5 Scary Ghost Videos That'll Creep You Out. This video is by Nukes Top 5, so you guys haven't already, be sure you swoop down to the description box, click on the link, and go watch the video the entirety while me pausing and stopping and talking through the whole thing. Again, I keep saying it, but thank you guys so much for the 2K subscribers, man. Let's keep going forward. Let's keep doing what we're doing. I want to keep posting videos. Hit that notification bell so you can get all my drops when they do uh, come out and any updates or anything like that. Make sure you're following the post, because sometimes I post that I'm not uh, going to be recording or put out posting a video that day. But, if you guys have any strange stories of your own, be feel free to let me know down in the live chat or let me know down in the comment section if you're watching this after it's already been recorded. But for now, let's get it. Ah, ah, ah. Let's go. I don't know what it is, but I like black reaction channels the most. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Making banana bread. Oh, you better send me some of that. Let's get it. Hope y'all got y'all snacks. Scary things on camera. Can you guys hear it? Is the volume good? Opening a doorway. Opening a doorway? Tomo and Hiro from the YouTube channel Omagatoki Film claim that a real estate agent reached out to them concerning a house that he found extremely difficult to sell. The agent says that the house once belonged to a family of three who mysteriously went missing in 2013, leaving behind Eight all of their personal belongings in the house. The current owner is desperate to sell. He believes that there's a dark presence inside the home and wants nothing to do with it. We'll be the judge he of that. He absolutely refuses to go inside the home or even get close to it. And all of these strange stories about the haunted house have kept buyers away as well. Tomo and Hiro say that the real estate agent and the owner reached out to them to find an explanation for the creepy alleged haunting inside the family home. When the two go to investigate, the current owner warns them to keep the doors closed at all times. That sounds good, Seth. But he doesn't explain why. If you open a door and go through it, you have to close the door. That's when you definitely have to make sure. Heeding the creepy warning, Tomo and Hiro respect the owner's request and close each door behind them whenever they step inside a new room. The two investigators immediately get the sense that something about the house is just a bit off. You think something's off when a guy's already told you that the house is off to begin with. Why would you have to close the door behind you unless it's leading to another parallel universe or you risk the chance of something following right behind you. So you close the door to kind of like cut them off so that you don't get hunted or you don't get attached by a ghost. But I mean, that's just my opinion. I wouldn't be in there in the first place, bro. <laughs> あけたら閉じるようにっていう Strangely enough, Tomo and Hiro discover that many of the closet and cabinet doors are half open, contradicting the strange warning that they got to leave all the doors closed at all times. They don't think much of it and just continue their investigation. Don't listen. Mm -mm -mm. But did you see it? No, I didn't. Tomo and Hiro are completely unaware of what they just captured on camera. But watch again. What was that? Someone or something seems to be standing right behind the rack of clothes as two bare feet can be seen underneath. I got some crusty toes. But the investigators just don't notice. 
Soon the two explorers begin to hear a strange ringing sound that they believe to be coming from the home's quote, altar room. Mm -mm. A room that is dedicated to Buddhist prayer and sometimes houses altars meant to honor the dead. They go to investigate and things take a terrifying turn. I ask again, did you see it? I didn't see nothing. Right after Tomo and Hiro enter the altar room and Tomo is closing the door, a pair of feet can be seen once again. But this time, much Oh my closer. god. What makes the footage even creepier is that only moments earlier, in the same spot, there was nothing there. Whatever is in the home with the two investigators seems to be following them. And then, when they turn their back, the sliding door seems to open on its own. Hiro decides to do a solo investigation in the altar room in the hopes of capturing any paranormal activity. He sets up a static camera and then just sits in the dark and waits. Yeah. After 30 minutes, nothing has happened. Did you see it? So, Hiro gets a bit bored and decides to go check out another room. And this is when things get truly bizarre. Why would you do this, bro? I'm sorry, y'all. I'm a big baby when it comes to stuff like that. I don't care, man. I, don't, I can't do it. See them crusty ass feet again, bro. I'm done. Stop Whoa. turning the camera like that, bro. Is that a face? Bro, do, bro, do not open it, bro. Don't. I'm 
about to die, bruh. Hero hears a sliding door move on its own, and he discovers that the door to the altar room has once again mysteriously opened on its own. The investigator hears the bizarre ringing sound again, and when he turns around, he sees the creepy face of something staring back at him through the sliding door. Everything's locked Hero gathers his courage and approaches the door. He opens it, and the face disappears into thin air. There's no one there. So did Hiro and Tomo capture paranormal evidence of a haunted home? Yes. Could it be the restless spirits of the family who mysteriously disappeared? Let me know what you think. Bruh. You can watch this entire video over on the YouTube channel, Omagatoki Film. There, there, YouTube channel. It stares back. Bruh, that whole video was horrible, bruh. I think usually we watch Nukes Top 5, it's kind of like, did you see? And it's kind of like weird or not. But this one, I kind of believe it, bruh. That shit was kind of scary, bruh. I'm not going to lie. Like, my heart was racing. I felt like I was there. Every time they turned the camera, I thought the dude's feet or his face was going to be there because he kept getting closer and closer. Every time they stopped the footage, like, did you see it? And I was like, you kind of don't want to see it, but at the same time, you're curious. So it's kind of like, I'm scared, but why do I want to see more? Like, I, me, I couldn't, bruh. You couldn't pay me enough to go inside somewhere haunted bro i just i just couldn't do it man that's some scary shit boy i'll tell you jesus christ man i need like a a red bull or something like i don't know i need something to calm my nerve bro i need a fruit snack or something a tiny town on the outskirts of wagoner county oh, oklahoma reddit user livid excuse 1640 and a friend are cruising down a deserted road in the middle of the night in the middle of nowhere. They approach a long abandoned house that Reddit user Livid Excuse 1640 says has always seemed a bit creepy and has been sitting deserted for many years for unknown reasons. I wouldn't either, Aiden. On a whim, he takes out a battery operated spotlight and decides to shine it right into the windows of the abandoned house. Why? The guys spot something downright chilling. Why are you even out there? Like, why? Why are you going to a bar or a club or go play Mario Party or something? Why are you shining lights in the bed? Oh, okay. Go to Disneyland or something, bro. Movie theater. On camera, the friends catch a pale, creepy face that seems to appear from nowhere, peeking back at them from the darkness inside the house. Oh, hell Even no. when hit by the bright spotlight, the white Bro, face hey. appears to have no recognizable features. When they realize what they are looking at, the guys hit the gas and speed away from the abandoned house. Reddit user Livid Excuse 1640 says that he's visited the house before, and it appears that whoever used to live there left in a hurry. So what do you think this is? Is it something paranormal? Is it just a strange trick of the light? Or is there something in there? Let me know down below. 100% a ghost in here. What made it even worse? Like, he was like, did you see it? Like, damn, bro, we see it. You don't gotta zoom in that much. Like, gee whiz, Batman. Scary people, places, and things. Now, this next video was sent in to me privately by a Nukes Top 5 viewer, but the source is unknown. All I know about the video is that a couple was out hiking through the Romanian woods when they spot something terrifying in the distance. One of the hikers pulls out a phone and starts to record. Why every time people film, they got these Nokia sidekick cameras, bro? Stop, dude, bro. You... Is that it? Yeah, that's all. 
I-a dat drum? Mă, stiu cu telefonul ăsta, am pula mea, că te vede cu fiul mei. Bă, pula morții, i-a dat drum? That's a woman. That's why in a costume, bro, 100%. That's why in a costume, bro. You can tell. In the video, the two anonymous Romanian hikers wonder aloud whether, quote, they released it. I can only assume that they're referring to the strange pale figure in the video that looks like something right out of a nightmare. She's back there busting it open. I'm honestly not sure just what this is. Could it be something paranormal, a creature, or just a very bizarre looking person clad all in white? I leave it up to you to decide. That's somebody's grandma back. From the wow, bro. He said, Let's go to Disneyland while it's dark. Yeah, fact, anywhere there. Did they record it? Hey, what's good, Zim? Just in time for what's up, Jim? Bruh, how crazy and sick do you have to be? Just be like, you know what? Let's go up to the top and try to kill somebody with a block of concrete, bruh. Like, why? Like, for what, bro? Like, bunch of losers like <laughs> do you know how big of a loser you have to be to like hey let's go drop a concrete block from a top of a building and see who he can hit like why even throw your life away over something like that and then plus the video evidence and they still didn't get arrested bro like oh my goodness bro i don't know about that grandpa but he was still sitting there looking up like another one was about to fall like he was about to stop the next one from coming bro i would have ran i would have been out of dodge bro that's what this makes you just want to live your life to the fullest because you legit could have got taken out by a f dropping piece of concrete, bro. What's up, Jordan? It's crazy, man. YouTube channel Franco TV goes on a very creepy exploration through an abandoned Grand man. Hotel in Montgomery, Alabama. Montgomery? Frank plans to perform a ghost hunt, but little does he know that the large building he is about to explore is now home to something much scarier than ghosts and apparitions. It turns out that a group of aggressive and dangerous homeless squatters have taken over the abandoned building. As Frank starts his ghost hunt, things soon take a very frightening turn. I'll be the judge of that. I gotta be careful. Not the flash. I totally just hurt somebody. I bet you did. Oh, somebody's grandma. That's all this guy. Oh, somebody's grandpa. I'm gonna get out of here. For a second. Go, 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 go. They about to clap his cheeks. You're probably disturbing a house, bro. <laughs> 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 
Wherever Frank goes, he keeps running into potentially dangerous squatters and just barely avoids confrontation. Even dangerous. though he's somewhat aware of the danger, Frank still continues to explore. But he has no idea just how close the angry squatters are watching him. I'm literally looking for other locations here that I haven't recorded just yet. But because there's so many people here, I have to be extremely careful and cautious at what I do. Because the last thing I need to do is get robbed, mugged, or anything. But this place is huge. It's like four buildings in one. That's Cap, bro. I'm calling Cap. I'm already getting sounds of people. Frank is distracted by unexplained sounds and is talking to his camera when he passes one of the hotel room windows. To his viewer's horror, a hooded man can be seen standing right at the window, just staring at Frank as he goes by. At the time, Frank is completely unaware of the danger he's in, so he just keeps on filming and exploring, with no idea of what he just encountered right next to him. Now obviously this is not one of Franco TV's usual paranormal videos. In fact, if anything, it might be even scarier. Watch this full crazy exploration over on the YouTube channel, Franco TV. Reaching out. He's legit walking around an abandoned building where homeless people are seeking shelter and calling it paranormal, bro. Like, where do you, what are you scared of? Like, they're living there. Like, <laughs> Oh my god, it's so dangerous. So uh, um these squatters are dangerous. They're not there. They live there, bruh. You over there trying to make YouTube videos, they over there living their best life. From beyond. <laughs> Popular <laughs> Chinese ghost hunter Xiao Long is exploring an allegedly haunted location in a small village on the outskirts of Jeez. Xinyang, China. This time Xiao Long is investigating a sprawling farm where a large extended family used to live. Locals claim that years ago they would often hear screaming and shouting coming from the farm. They say that the head of the family, an elderly man, had a very bad temper and was often cruel to his family. One by one, his children and grandchildren <laughs> moved away from him to the big city. His family never returned. Individually, the old man passed away all alone inside his farmhouse. Xiaolong is recording a live stream as he explores the farm grounds all alone. At first, he finds strange talismans on and above many of the farmhouse doors, suggesting that someone has been there to try to ward off evil spirits that might oh, haunt the property. Shit. Here we go. Oh man, he got that MySpace web camera. You guys are all the same. Your father is here. Your daddy's here, huh? You were told you, my little fool. Talisman. I hate when people turn the camera super fast, bro. I told you, my little fool, the little little wheeler. I'm scared. Oh my god, here's my arm. Come on. Two mannequins. I'm scared, Brad. You about to move? A large wooden board suddenly drops from the ceiling and barely uh -oh. misses Xiao Long. He said his mom. Now, this could just be a very strange coincidence caused by a loose board in a very decaying house. But what happens next is a lot harder to explain. Bruh, he said F your mom, bruh. He about to get that work now. He got messed up. Not the mama. You don't do the moms, bruh. Oh, he's young. Right, 
Two windows fly open and the exit door slams <laughs> shut. A little freaked out now, Xiaolong runs outside to calm himself down. Eventually, he gathers his courage and heads back inside. Why? He soon finds a room cluttered with old furniture, personal belongings, and boards from the caved-in ceiling. What happens next is downright chilling. Uh uh, Chief. Wait, why did you cut the music off? It's just a year. Was that a face? Or my tripping? Oh my god, this place has a lot of good stuff. It's all old people, right? A terrifying pale face can be seen watching Xiaolong from the other side of a window. Oh, no. When he checks it out and opens the window, he only finds a small clay pot right where the face appeared. But this was absolutely not just a simple optical illusion. You can see by comparing the pot and the face in the window. Oh no, bro. It's almost as if this strange face turned into a pot. It looked like a... Now that might make no sense, but this will not be the last time we see a creepy unexplained clay pot. Oh no. So it stay looked... tuned. It kind of looked like a... explains that he now feels something very sinister in this place. A little later into the investigation, and he finds something very creepy. Again, we see a clay pot. Now I reached out to Xiaolong to ask him about these strange pots, especially this one sitting on top of a covered cellar door. He explained to me that in China, occasionally clay pots like these are used to store the ashes of the deceased. The red cloth underneath the pot is placed there to ward off evil spirits. But that doesn't stop our boy Xiaolong. Hey, bro, just show long. Just go home, bro, man. That face looked like a mask, low key. I don't know, but it could have scared the shit out of me. Out. What's up? You see how fast I was out of there, right? I don't play, bro. I be going. What's up, you ma? This is you, Why? <laughs> Why? Oh, hell no, nah, Sandin. What's wrong with you, Ghost be like, am I a joke to you? <laughs> Why are you doing <laughs> Oh, my God. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? What is this dude? <laughs> he <fell>. <laughs> <laughs> That joy has good so long. After taking a well deserved break in his car, Shaolong heads back in alone one final time intending to destroy what he now believes to be a cursed clay pot. It did not go well. You would do the same thing? Are you crazy, Jordan? Oh my god. 
good. He kicked it. Bro, he's about to get haunted for the rest of his life, bro. He's done for. That's all she wrote. She, like, there's nothing that he can do right now. He's. What was that? Something stood up, no? A pair of hands seemed to reach right up out of the ground, searching oh, yeah. for something. The horrifying event is caught on live stream by Xiao Long and his online viewers watch in terror. He finally makes a run for it and just gets out of there. So is the abandoned creepy farm haunted by the malicious spirit of the old man who was left behind by his family? Let me know what you think. That was the scariest You can I've watch this and many life. more creepy videos of Xiao Long's investigations with English subtitles over on his YouTube channel, Outdoor Xiao Long. Disappearing act. Oh man. Paranormal investigation. I can't, bro. That was the worst one. I thought the uh, the beginning one was pretty bad with the Japanese guys, but this Shao Long dude is on. He he's next level crazy, man. Like, why are you doing all that with the pot? Why did you kick it? Then he is on live stream, so he can't fake hands coming out the ground on live stream. So it. I, I don't know. I don't think you can fake something like that on live stream. But damn, man. I really hope that nothing followed him home, bruh. Like, he did the most. Like, that was overboard, bruh. And then Jordan over here talking about she would play soccer with it. Like, nah, man. I can't, man. The one time I would ever go into a building, I think, if I had one million subscribers, I would do it. But nah, man. <sighs> Get her Alberto from the YouTube channel Alberto <laughs> Del Arco travels to a long abandoned warehouse in Mexico. Locals claim to have no explanation or idea of what this location was used for or why it's abandoned. Many suspect that the structure was used for horrific illegal activities, such as hiding or disposing of the remains of the deceased. Some believe that this dark activity might have left the warehouse extremely haunted on, and most people prefer to stay far away from the creepy site. Those who have dared to explore the creepy location claim to have witnessed shadows, heard ear-piercing screams, and some even say that they have fled from the sound of footsteps that seem to be following them, getting closer and closer. Together with his two cameramen, Alberto Del Arco goes to investigate the alleged taunting. It doesn't take long before the guys begin to hear strange sounds and witness some very frightening activity. Está muy, muy raro. Ahí hay otro tambo. Hay mucha tierra. Entonces, esto ha ayudado para que también muchas personas. Hijo de su madre. ¿Qué fue, güey? Mira. Ahí arriba, ¿no? Ahí hay varios. Ay, güey, me dolió todo. Me asusté. Pudiera haber gente, ¿eh? De pronto pudiera haber personas que se meten. Personas. Al parecer ya se han robado partes. De este sitio se ve algunas zonas quemadas. A heavy gas can slams to the ground as if thrown from somewhere nearby. But that's not the only creepy thing that happens in this clip. Not bad so far. Did you see it? Right above Alberto's head, a dark shape can be seen quickly peeking out. But when they go to check inside the room, there's no one there. Alberto and his team are completely unaware of what they've just captured. They continue their investigation of this strange warehouse, but as they explore inside, the cameraman captures something absolutely shocking. Esto me imagino que eran una especie de tinas o contenedores, ¿sabes? Y mira, ahí hay unos ductos. Pero ¿qué tenían aquí? ¿De qué era esta fábrica? Lo curioso es que ya preguntamos con los vecinos y nadie Wait, sabe exactamente qué es lo que había. En este lugar, la temperatura sigue bajando, 22.2 de 22.9. Sí, baja muy rápido, baja muy drástico. Atrás de ti. ¿Qué fue? ¿Qué fue? A ver, puede haber gente, ¿eh? Atrás de ti. ¿Qué fue? ¿Qué fue? ¿Qué fue? A ver, puede haber gente, ¿eh? Hola. 
¿Lo tienes con tu cámara? Creo que sí. ¿Lo, lo, ¿Lo tendrás con tu cámara? Hola. Pero eso está muy alto, ¿no? Digo, como para brincarle. Lo veo algo alto. Por ahí hay escaleras, mira. Cuidado, Tony, ten cuidado, no te vas a caer. As the camera turns down a hallway, what looks like a pale, creepy figure can be seen quickly darting out of sight. Cap. When the team hurries over to investigate, they discover just how high the area is above the ground. For something to have been peeking around that corner, it, it would have had to be at least seven or eight feet tall. Cap. A little later into the investigation, and the three friends witness something else that is truly bizarre. No entiendo. A ver, ¿hay alguien ahí parado, no? Ay, 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 ¿Ves algo, Tony? ¿Se salió? Güey, yo vi a alguien parado, güey. Vi a alguien parado ahí. Sí. Hay algo cerca. Alberto y su team watch as someone seems to walk away from them. At first they believe this is simply a stranger who is also exploring the factory. But when they reached the area where they saw the dark figure of a man. Again, there's just no one It there. Probably went through there. Cut to a bit later, and one of Alberto's cameramen claims that he sees something move in the brush. Anybody else think this is Cap? Anybody? No entiendo, pero pareciera que hay algo aquí. Anybody think this is Cap? Digo, tal vez. Es que no sabemos qué fue esto, pero pudiera haber algún tipo de. ¿Qué güey? ¿Qué qué 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 qué? ¿Qué pasó? ¿Dónde? Aquí. Pues a ver, alumbra un poquito para allá. ¿Viste algo? <risa> Cuidado, puede, puede haber muchos animales. Things just get more and more absurdly bizarre as a hand seems to reach out from the darkness and grab what appears to be either a cloth or an old paper. Oh my so, goodness. So, did the team capture evidence of paranormal Hell activity no. at the mysterious warehouse? <laughs> or is it all just an elaborate hoax? You decide. You can watch this full video and many more creepy investigations over on the YouTube channel, Alberto Del Arco. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Follow me on Twitter here, on Instagram there, and on TikTok right there. See you next week. Bruh, that last video was so much cap, bro. I'm starting not to believe these videos where the ghost, you turn on the, and the ghost be like this. Why do ghosts do that, bro? Like, every person that claims to capture a ghost, they always capture the ghost doing this shit. Like, and then you're gonna have somebody hand come over the thing and grab some towel that just happens to be on the edge of the thing. Comes over, pulls it off the thing, and then you just keep catching it over and over. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know the other videos, you kind of, like, capture some paranormal, like, here and there. This dude was capturing every corner. They got there. Somebody threw a canister. They got it to the top. They seen somebody. They turned around. He's poked his head out. They looked down the street. He's right there. Like, come on, bro. Stop the cat, man. It was entertaining. Like, <laughs> it, was, it was really entertaining. But that last one was just super cat, bro. Like, they capped the hell out of that last one. Uh, the next video we got is um three disturbing true hacker horror stories by Mr. Nightmare. So, with that being said, if you guys uh, would like to see this video, so the entirety, while we pausing and stopping and talking through the whole thing, make sure you soup down in the description box, click on the link, go watch the video, so the entirety, and yeah, but I'll be pausing and stopping and talking through the whole thing. So, I don't know, I really don't know too much about hacker stories. I mean, I've heard a lot of them through, like, 
excuse me, like the dark web and stuff like that, where people go into the dark web and they forget to use all these uh, web browsers to kind of like block their IP address and people access their cameras and they see where their addresses and all that stuff is and they pull up on them. Some people have been kidnapped, some people have been attacked. Like, it's it's a bunch of crazy stuff. That's why I just stay off the dark web because I'm not about that life. I don't have the, the knowledge or the technology to kind of get somebody that try to do it to me. And plus, half the people that's on the dark web are usually people with power that has lots and lots and lots of power. Not everybody, but they have some kind of juice to where they can just pull up and just get you and stuff. There's some dark stuff on there. I wouldn't advise you to do it, but I'm pretty sure that they're going to have some kind of dark web type stuff going on or somebody was talking smack on the Xbox and and they got their shit cut off which kind of happened to me back in the day I got you know I, I didn't believe in people shutting down IP addresses and internet and all that stuff until I met the right one and he shut off my whole shit and I tell you one thing I have never talked smack online since because people can legit see where you are. That's why you got to use VPN and most other things these days. Because people are smart as hell, bruh. People are still hacking Call of Duty. And Call of Duty can't even do that. Like, they have all these smart people. And they still can't stop people from doing that stuff. Man, I watched Mr. Nightmare in years. But, yep, here we go. Hacker horror stories. Let's get it. The topic of today's video has to do with computer hackers. Specifically, stories recounted by victims of computer hackers. And this video happens to be sponsored by Atlas VPN, an app that encrypts your data and hides your virtual location online. See? It makes it harder for people like the hackers you'll hear about in this video Told to you. figure out where you are, what you're doing on the internet, and collecting personal data of yours. I won't At the moment, you. Atlas VPN is the cheapest VPN provider that's able to protect you as well as unlock worldwide libraries of services that could usually be blocked by regional barriers, such as Netflix, Amazon Prime, Disney Plus, and more. And it's able to do this by allowing you to change your location to another country, so, for example, if the region in which you live doesn't have a specific title that's available to a different region, you can use Atlas VPN to change your location to make that title movies. available to you. Unlike other VPNs, which may be clunky and confusing to mm -hmm. navigate, the user interface for Atlas VPN is very simple and user-friendly. Atlas VPN strives to provide easy and accessible privacy and does not log user activity while they're connected to their servers. Check the link in the description for more info. Speaking of Netflix, different locations, I'm sorry to stop, but let me tell you, bro, American Netflix is butt cheap compared to Germany and Japan. I am telling you, we are being robbed blind for the, what Netflix offers in America, bro. These, the European Netflix and Japanese Netflix, bro, they have updated shows, more shows, more movies, better movies, bro. Not them 1964 Lifetime Movie Network movies that American Netflix give us, bro. I'm telling you, bro. European Netflix, Japanese Netflix. I'm telling you, bro. Not even capping. We're getting ripped off. <clears throat> Back when I was 17, my friend told me about this deep web drug website called Dream times. Market. It was where he bought things like weed and Adderall. Weed? He had what he referred to as a trusted dealer, whose information he sent me to buy from. I don't condone doing anything like this. I was simply just young and stupid. Oh. Not buying Adderall would help me with my senior projects. Anyway, I went about doing that. However, this purchase made me intrigued to continue browsing Dream Market and seeing what else one could buy. And I saw this range from counterfeit bills to real guns. This got me more intrigued to be more of the deep web. I found some link somewhere on Dream Market that led to, I guess, what was a drug chat room. Because it was just a lot of people seemingly advertising the drugs they were selling and their rates. I found it interesting. Some people would post random dot onion links, and I clicked on one. It brought me to a black page with the title Home Base at top in large text. Underneath were a bunch of other random links. I clicked on a bunch of them. Most never loaded, probably being dead links. A couple loaded. One was another chat room. This one didn't have a title. There were like three usernames signed into the room, all random looking, just like the assortment of random letters I inputted just because I didn't care. The chat's previous history showed. A few people were talking in another language, then another guy was typing in English. That guy was still in the chat room, and actually, before I typed anything, he typed yo directed at me. I typed yo back. He said, what you looking for? Red flag. I typed back, I don't know, lol. He asked how I found that link, and I told him just from some site called Home Base. I asked if he had any cool links, as it was my first time on the deep web. He typed back, lol, then sent a link. He didn't say anything else. 
I clicked the link, and it took a little while to load the page. It loaded the black background first, then a little text box near the bottom, and the last thing that loaded was a video. At first I thought it was like a pausable video, but it looked to be some kind of live streaming video. The video was black and white, and it was of a dark room with some mannequin looking thing sitting in a wooden chair. There was this grainy effect to the footage that made it feel more surreal and unnerving. I genuinely couldn't tell if I was watching a live video or not. Then, as if it were some kind of movie jump scare, what I thought was a mannequin in that chair suddenly jumped up and sprinted towards the camera, and a loud, staticky screaming sound accompanied it. The apparent porcelain mask that the person was wearing was so close up on the camera at that point that all I could see was black. I went back to the chat and asked that guy what the hell this was. He replied, just keep watching, lol, and then he left the chat. First of all, you don't go on a dark web. That's the first red flag. Damn, come on, man. Second red flag is, why the hell are you gonna click some random link on a dark web? And you don't listen to people and just click random links on a dark web. One, they can tell you to click that link and to access all your information, track where you are. You don't click on links that people give you on a dark web, bro. That's red flag. I've never even been on a dark web, and even I know that. I went back to the other Ted. And the video or live stream window was gone. It was now just a blank screen with a text box on the bottom. Red flag. The text box didn't let me type anything though. My Tor browser window suddenly closed without my doing. Then a deep, raspy voice was coming from my speakers. It was someone obviously trying to disguise their voice. Dang. The voice one. said my first name and claimed they had all my files. Then the webcam window popped up and I saw my face on the screen. I turned off my laptop and went to the Geek Squad at Best Buy where I bought the computer. <laughs> the guy I spoke to his guess was that he was able to somehow get the basic info off my computer like my account name. He recommended I factory reset the computer. He helped me with the process. I, think well. I didn't have anything I was worried about losing on there anyway, it was a relatively new computer. If you're ever on the deep web, I heavily recommend using some kind of VPN, even for the alleged safe websites. I told you, I caught it, didn't I say it? I haven't even been on there and I know that. Common sense. Who goes on the dark web without, v without VPN on? On their main computer. I'm 24 computer. years old, and I'm from a small town called Yarmouth in Nova Scotia, Canada. I keep my social circle very small. Just my few friends and my co-workers, really. I mention that as a point in saying I don't really know anyone who would be out to get me in any way. I browse Reddit a lot in my free time. I'm an active poster. There was this one night when I pulled up Reddit on my browser out of boredom that I had a new message. Not unusual, as I'd have people messaging me in reference to my posts quite often. It was a message request from some random account, a now deleted username. The message said, check your email, your spam folder specifically. I replied back, huh? Why, who's this? In the meantime, I opened up my Gmail and went to the spam folder. There was one email that stuck out from the rest, titled in all caps, I KNOW WHO YOU ARE. I opened the email, and it was basically a paragraph full of my personal information, Report spam. including my full name, my Reddit password, my home address, along with threats. Basically, whoever sent the email was asking for a one-time payment of $5,000 through Bitcoin to a specific Bitcoin wallet address. Hell no. My heart was basically in my throat. I had that terrible feeling of helplessness, and like the entire world was collapsing in on me. The first thing I did was cover my webcam with a piece of tape. Secondly, I went back to Reddit to see if the user ever answered my message. They did not. I went to report the account on Reddit as quick as I could, as if that would even do anything though. It won't. I replied to the email, copy-pasting the exact message I sent to the Reddit account, asking who this was, how they got that information, and if this was a prank. I got an email back around five minutes later, in all capitals saying, no, it's not a prank. We have all your information, including where you live. So your best course of action is to do as we say, and you'll never hear from us again. Obviously, I was not going to shell out $5,000. I don't even make a lot of money to begin with. Yeah, if they would have sent that to me, they would have been mad disappointed because your boy is broke as shit, bro. Like, I am broke. Like, they would have just had to come get me because they would have to check the bank account myself. I would have showed them, like, look. They would have felt sorry for me and gave me money, bro. That's how broke I am. I contacted all of my friends asking if What's it was up? any of them. Cheeky. Like begging them to just come forward now before I call the police. None of them admitted to it. So given that I threatened calling the police, I knew it wasn't any of them. 
I tried to think of anyone at work who might have issues with me. So Riley? Really, I get along with everyone at work. I chalked it up to my password somehow being stolen by malware or a hacker, and through that they somehow got the rest of my information. The main question was, do I pay the money? And that was absolutely not happening. Mm -mm. I forced myself to go to sleep and left my laptop off the whole next day. I used my desktop instead after getting home from work. I didn't sign into Reddit or anything though. I did however change my password on all other websites and apps on my phone. Good. I finally signed into my laptop late that night because I was just so bored and curious. Curious but nervous to see if anything had changed and if I'd gotten any new emails. I signed on and everything on my computer still looked normal. So I went to Reddit and saw the user who messaged me was now deleted. So I went to a subreddit which talked about computer hackers and scams and such, mm -hmm. and I posted my experience. At some point, I noticed the taskbar at the bottom of the screen turned darker. Curious, I minimized all my windows, and my desktop wallpaper was different. I knew right away what it was though. Hackers. I recognized the outside of my bedroom window. The white frame of the outside windowsill was in the picture, and the flash of the camera also caught me laying in my bed sleeping. Some seconds later, a pop-up window appeared, along with the window's error sound. Inside the pop-up error window was a message saying the word pay, with a winking face following it. I closed my laptop screen and forced the computer off by holding the power button. I also pulled my blinds down and called my parents. It was still early enough to do so. I told my dad over the phone that some hacker had my info, and he came right over with his truck to help me load any valuables I could think of into his truck to stay with them for a while. Before we drove off from my apartment, my dad yelled like a madman into the night sky, basically threatening whoever was hacking me. It was definitely a scene, but I was too preoccupied with worry to be embarrassed by it. I stayed with my parents for weeks and used my mom's computer when needed. I blocked that email address that sent me the original email. I finally got back to my apartment a few days ago. I'm still scared every night to hear a knock at my window or get another threatening email. I haven't brought it to the police yet, as I'm hoping it's all just a bluff still to get me to pay. I'm also hoping it's over and that they've given up. It's called Hacker, Three Disturbing True Hacker Horror Stories, but my thing is, who the hell sleeps with their window open with the blinds open? Like, one, opening your window is one thing, bruh, but if you just sleep with your curtains just rip, like, you just asking for trouble, bruh, like... I used to have blinds too, but I used to open my window, but at the same time, I used to close the blinds. So it's kind of like the wind is coming in, but at the same time, you can't see inside the window. You get what I'm saying? But he, unfortunately, he was just minding his own business, and somehow he got targeted by hackers, and he didn't want to pay, so he ended up dipping. So I don't know what you can do really about that. I mean, I don't know if they really was about that life, or they're just doing it to just try to like scare him into like actually doing it. You know, people are just going to put pressure on you until you, like, actually pay them. But then again, if you do pay them, they're going to be like, you know what? We didn't get it. Or they're going to be like, now we want 10000 in you know, in Bitcoin or whatever it is. And it's going to keep going and going. So I don't know how to win that war. So uh, he, yeah, like, I don't know why he even opened back up the laptop. He should have just left it how it was and just went on about his business. But I don't know. Everybody can't be the Sims and you know recognize the red flags ahead of time you know it happens that's why i'm here for you guys that's why i'm here to tell you guys how to avoid stuff like this man oh my goodness my name is miranda i'm 25. i've had my share of experiences with stalkers and men harassing me, me too. social media has made that far too easy these days i once got a suspicious email that i should have known better than to open facts it was asking me to click a link to some random page because i was being sued by some random company Click the link, and soon after that, my computer started acting all glitchy and unresponsive. So Even after Foxy. restarting it multiple times, it was just laggy and slow, and random sound effects would play once in a while. I was certain my computer had a virus, but I wasn't sure to what extent it would go just yet. The next day, I had a bunch of friends texting me what's up with that Instagram post, and asking if I was the one who even posted it. I panicked and opened Instagram, but I was logged out of my account. Someone was hacking me. This confirmed it. If they had my Instagram password, I had no idea what else they could have. Apparently, the picture posted on my Instagram was some stupid cartoon meme. It was extremely embarrassing. Minutes of freaking out later, my Snapchat started blowing up. It was from some random account that just added me. They were spamming me to Snapchat call them. So I did. And when they picked up, 
I saw like a quarter of someone's face. It looked like a young guy in his Why 20s. Why would you answer it? I could tell he was smiling. That was the creepy thing. The way he said hello was so long and stretched out. I was pretty frantic, asking what he wanted in return for my Instagram back. He started telling me some really creepy shit. He said he sees me every day and that he thinks I'm really pretty and that this was the only way he'd get my attention. I didn't know what to say. He said he'd give me my account back if I would just be his digital girlfriend. What? As creepy and weird as this was, I said yes in a heartbeat just to get my stuff back. He told me the password to get back onto my Instagram account. And as soon as I changed the password, I set my profile to private and put a story up saying that wasn't me, I was hacked. I asked this guy for his name and what other info he had on me. He said I could just call him John, and that he could get all the information about me that he wanted. He said this with a smile, too. Yeah. You could see it in the fourth of his face that he would actually show. He refused to show the rest. I played nice the whole time, knowing this guy's a sicko. I managed to get him off the call by telling him I'd snap him tomorrow. I then told all my friends about it and asked what I should do. They all unanimously said I should activate two-factor verification on my Instagram account and then deactivate the account and then block him. When I did all of that though, he didn't take it too well. An hour later, I got a new snap user blowing up my snap. Uh -oh. I knew it was him, but I opened the snaps anyway. And it was him again threatening me, saying he knows where I live and blocking him was a stupid thing to do. I showed it to my parents now because it was getting serious, so my dad called the police. I didn't block the guy's snapchat yet though, and I'm glad I didn't. As my parents and I were sitting in the kitchen waiting, I got a snap from the guy. It was a video. I waited a few seconds before opening it. It was a video of him sitting in his car in front of our house, with the caption, Don't block me again. My dad ran outside in a fit of rage. He tried to stop him, but he wouldn't. But the car wasn't even in front of the house anymore. The guy Damn. probably waited until driving away before sending that snap. I'm just gonna say the police did absolutely nothing. They seem clueless on the matter. Yeah, I was about to There's say. There's not much police could do in hacker situations anyway. Yeah, that's what I was about to say too. However, I did send a snap of the police car back to the guy and put a caption, Fuck with me again, you'll be arrested. He opened the snap and immediately blocked me, so I'd say it worked. This story has a happier ending than most, I guess. But the amount of info some people can get from you online is absolutely terrifying. Dang, well that does it. Foxy says, is here's the thing, people, if you think you're being hacked, turn off your Wi-Fi and turn off your computer. Dang, I don't know, I'm glad. I mean, I'm gonna knock on wood, but uh, I'm glad that hasn't happened to me yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm glad that hasn't happened, so... I mean, it is what it is, man. If it happens, then... I don't know. Like you said, I don't know. I was about to say that earlier. She said she called the police. Like, what? The, what the police gonna do? Like, oh, hold on, let me hop on. Hold on, hop on the my the mainframe and see where we're, where we're getting all this the stalkerish content is coming from. Like, you just out of luck. You can't send the police on somebody you don't know to know what they look like. You don't know what their car is driving. Uh, like, is it a man? Is it a female? Like, you don't, like, they don't know what they're looking for. So what the hell are the police going to do besides take down your report and just hope that you end up running into them or something? What's up, Wolf Kid? Even doing that probably won't work. Yeah, that's true as well. Finally early to a live stream? Oh, this ain't early. We got one more video. <laughs> but, hold on. Uh, the last video. And you already know who it is. There are a. Uh oh, yeah, I heard him. But this video is by Mr. Ballin. And his video is called The Miss. This man is uh, terror. This man terrified the FBI. It's for mature audience only. So if you guys are sensitive to certain material, be sure you click out of the video as of right now because viewer discretion is advised. You may have some type of pictures that may offend you. They may say something that may offend you. It might be. Uh, Amongst other things, images, videos, whatever it may be, if you're uh, more of the, on the weak side or weak, weaker stomach, then you probably want to click out of the video. But if you guys want to see this without me uh, pausing and stopping through the whole thing, make sure you swoop down to the description box, click on a link, and go watch the video to the entirety while me pausing and stopping and talking through the whole thing. But let's dive into it, man. If you guys have any questions, feel free to let me know down in the live, and I'll try to answer them as the video goes on, or I'll pause it and answer your questions. But let's continue. Let's get it. But yeah, I missed it, man. Wolf Kid and Riley, oh my god. That nuke's top top five, 
Are you talking about scary? Oh my goodness. There are a few graphic and distressing details mm -hmm. that are revealed at the end of this story. Viewer discretion is advised. But, but before we get into, into today's story, story, if you're a fan, fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, format and, and you've come to the right place channel, because that's all we do, and we upload three or four, four times, times every week. week. So if that's of interest to you, please replace the like button's eye drops with Egyptian fox urine. Also, please subscribe to our channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly uploads. All right, let's get into today's story. Yeah, plaid shirts is where it's at. I need to get me some more. I ran out. I used to have some, but I don't know where to get any good ones. Some of the patterns are boo -boo. I don't see the good ones. Target of opportunity. On the oh, morning of the February 2nd, dance. 2012, a young man pulled off a four-lane highway in Anchorage, Alaska into a large snowy parking lot. He passed by dozens of parked cars until he arrived in front of the small shack that was brightly teal colored. It was a popular coffee shop called The Common Grounds, and this young man worked as a barista there. After he parked his car, he walked up to the white door employee entrance to this little building, and he got his key out and he went to unlock the door, but when he turned the key, he saw the door was already unlocked. He knew the girl who had worked the previous night and would have been responsible for locking the shop up. She was 18-year-old Samantha Koenig, and although she had only only been on the job for about a month, she seemed very responsible and had never had any issues closing up before. The young man shrugged it off though. He figured people make mistakes and he went inside. Right away, he noticed that a couple of things just seemed out of place. It was like Samantha must have just left in the middle of her shift without even attempting to clean up. There were napkins on the ground, there were towels out, there were cups still out. And so as this young man is walking over to the cash register to unlock it, he's running through scenarios in his head about how Samantha could have been so sloppy. And then he reached down with his register key and just like the door, the cash register was already unlocked. When he pulled the tray out, all the money was gone. And that's when he knew they had been robbed and so he called his boss. The night before, Samantha had asked her boyfriend, Dwayne, to pick her up after her shift at the Common Grounds. Dwayne arrived in front of the kiosk at about 8.30 p.m., which was 30 minutes after her shift should have been over. Dwayne had gotten held up at his job, which is why he was late. And so when he gets there, Dwayne looks around the parking lot and he doesn't see Samantha anywhere. He sees the coffee shop itself is totally dark and looks like it's been closed up for the night. And so Dwayne gets out of his truck into the freezing cold night air and he walked up to the window of this coffee shop and he pressed his face up to the glass to look inside but there was nobody in there. Dwayne automatically mm. went back to the fight he had gotten into with Samantha earlier in the night via text message. She had accused him of cheating on her, he had been kind of nonchalant like he didn't care about it and what ensued was a really ugly fight. And so as Dwayne is walking back to his truck he's thinking to himself maybe Samantha just didn't want to see him because of the fight and so at the end of her shift she got a ride home from her father or maybe from a friend mm -hmm. and that's why she's not here. And so Dwayne sense. gets back inside of his truck and he sends a text message to Samantha asking if she's okay, if she's gotten home. But after several minutes of no response from her, Dwayne, even though they were fighting, he still cares an awful lot about his girlfriend. He decides, I just, I gotta go by her house and make sure she's there and that she's okay. And so a couple minutes later, he gets to her house. He goes up to the door and her single father, James, answers the door. Dwayne explains that he didn't see Samantha after her shift and just wanted to make sure she was here. But James says, she's not here. I have no idea where she is. I uh -oh. haven't spoken to her. And so the two men go into James's kitchen, they sit down and they start texting and calling Samantha to try to figure out where she is. And after a couple of minutes, Dwayne's phone lights up and it's a text message from Samantha. And the message clearly indicates that she's still very upset with Dwayne, but she's saying that she needs some time to think and that she's gonna be with some friends for a couple of days. And would he, Dwayne, let her father know where she was? And so Dwayne shows James the text message and Samantha's father looks at it and he's thinking mm -hmm. to himself, you know, this is very uncharacteristic yeah. of Samantha. He had raised Samantha since she was two years old and they were very close. They shared everything with each other. It didn't make any sense that she wouldn't contact him directly yeah. to say that she was going to be out with friends for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. And it didn't make sense that she would ignore all of his phone calls and text right. messages when clearly he was worried about her. Mm -hmm. The two men stayed up super late calling and texting, hoping to get more information from Samantha, but she never responded. She never texted back. And so the following morning when neither men had gotten any more messages from Samantha, James James went to the Anchorage Police Department and filed a missing person report for his only daughter. So, my thesis, or whatever, so this is what happens, right? So she went there to her work, right? She was kidnapped. Somebody took the money, and uh, they took her with her, and then somebody was, uh, how you said, they took her somewhere, and then whoever was with her, either they killed her already, 
or they had her tied up somewhere and they were getting nervous because she wasn't answering the phone. So they just picked up the phone, probably asked her what her code was or asked her to open a phone and they text her from her phone to her boyfriend. Because my thing is, if my friend or my wife was calling and my mom was calling, nine times out of ten, if I was mad at my wife, I would answer my mom's call. You get what I'm saying? It's not the... I'm going to ignore my dad and tell you I'm still mad at you. But since I'm still mad at you, make sure you tell my dad that I need a couple of time, like, you know, I need some time off. Why not just text him or call him yourself and tell him, why would you say that you're mad at me, but want me to deliver a message to your dad? You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like trying to throw you off of their, her trailer, throw her off of their um, plans of wherever Samantha may be. That's why I find my iPhone or tracker, whatever it is, should be, would be, uh, would come in handy in during cases like this. But I don't know. We'll see. But that's just my take on it. Uh, I kind of get like a bad vibe that whoever it was or whoever has her took her phone and made her open it and then use it to text them. After receiving this missing person report, an officer with the Anchorage Police Department called the owner of the Common Grounds coffee shop to ask about Samantha. And the owner actually said they just got a call from their barista that was working at the kiosk that morning and they had informed them that apparently there had been a robbery and no one can get in touch with Samantha. No one knows where she is. The owner told the police officer that as soon as she got her hands on the security footage from the night before, she would send it over to the police department. While the police waited for this footage, some officers began calling Samantha's friends and other family members to see if they knew where she was, but no one had heard from her and no one knew where she was. No one had any information. Some other police officers headed over to the Common Grounds coffee kiosk to get a look at it for themselves. And when they got there, there was no sign of a struggle outside or inside the kiosk. And inside, underneath the counter, was a panic button that had not been pressed. And so even though Samantha's father thought there was something odd about her final text message, the police began operating under the theory that Samantha had robbed the kiosk mm -hmm. and then left of her own accord. Mm -hmm. But what confounded police was how Samantha actually physically got away from the coffee shop. She didn't have a car that night, and she couldn't have just walked away because the weather was way too miserable and cold outside side and Anchorage is just not really a walkable city. And so if Samantha was telling the truth that she was just taking a couple of days to be by herself with some friends at their place, we'll then up. why didn't any of her friends know where she was? This question was answered later that day when the owner of the coffee shop made the security footage available. The footage, which has no audio, picks up around 8 p.m. on February 1st, 2012, which was the night Samantha went missing. It shows Samantha inside of the kiosk. She's working alone. She's cheerful and she's busy. And then at some point, someone that we can't see, they're outside of the camera's range, comes up to the window and orders a drink. Samantha clearly turns to them, acknowledges their drink order, and turns and begins making this drink. And then after she's done making it, she turns to give it to this person, and immediately Samantha steps back and puts her arms up. And then seconds later, she reaches over and turns off the lights inside of the kiosk, and then she gets down on her knees with her back to the window. She stays in that position, not talking, not moving, for about a minute before she slowly stands up and walks down the kiosk towards the cash register. She opens it up, she scoops some money out of it, and then she walks back to the window and appears to hand it to a shadowy figure on the other side of the window. And then Samantha turns, kneels again with her back to the window. Two more minutes go by before this person outside the window leans their entire upper body inside of the coffee shop. They reach down and they appear to tie Samantha's hands. Now, because it was dark inside of the kiosk, the footage winds up being extremely grainy Damn. and there's no way to identify who this figure is is. Although it's fairly obvious that it's a male, he's wearing a big sweatshirt and he's got a hat pulled down low over his face. After this mystery man is done tying Samantha's hands, he leaps through the window and then shuts the window behind him. And then he stands Samantha up, he puts a gun into her back, and then he marches her out the employee door and then out across the lot, all the way to a white pickup truck where he puts her inside and they drive off. Over the next couple of days, the police and also the FBI who had been called in to be a part of this investigation, they just kept hitting dead end after dead end because there was no evidence. All they had was the surveillance footage that was too grainy to tell who this guy was that took Samantha. Meanwhile, Samantha's father, mm -hmm. James, had rallied the support of nearly all 300,000 people that lived in Anchorage to go out and look for his daughter. His efforts were so profound, it had attracted major news outlets across the country, and suddenly his daughter's story had grabbed national headlines everywhere. 
This led to strangers donating thousands of dollars to fund a reward for anybody that had information about Samantha's whereabouts. But despite this reward growing in size every single day and the national news media becoming increasingly more interested in this case, Nothing. no one came forward with useful information that led to developments in this case. And Samantha never got in touch with Dwayne or her father. Then on February 24th, so three weeks after Samantha's gone missing and no one's heard from her, Dwayne got a text message from Samantha's phone and it was directing him to a particular sign inside of a nearby public park. And so Dwayne and James read this text, they shared it with the police department and then they raced to this park and actually beat the police there by about 15 minutes. And so Dwayne and James, they walk through the gates and they start walking down this main trail and they stop in front of the sign. It was actually a bulletin board and tacked on the bulletin board was a Ziploc bag inside of which was a typed ransom note. And on the ransom note, literally zero Xeroxed onto it was a black and white photo of Samantha. And in this photo, Samantha looks kind of dazed, like she's got a blank expression and she's not really looking at the camera. She's looking just to the side of the camera. And then in this picture, a man is holding a copy of the Anchorage Daily News newspaper that's dated February 13th, 2012. This was a proof of life photo where Samantha's captor was holding up that newspaper to indicate that Samantha was alive as of February 13th. And so to everybody involved in this case, including Samantha's father, even though this is still not a good situation at all, it was kind of a relief to know that at least as of last week, Samantha was alive. As for the demands of this ransom note, James was told to deposit $30,000 into his daughter's account immediately. And if he did that, she would be released six months later. As advised by the FBI, James deposited a portion of the ransom money into his daughter's account. And then the FBI just waited and watched because they knew if anyone tried to withdraw money from that account, they could track where the card was. A few days later, three separate withdrawals were made within Anchorage, but each time the FBI got a notification about one of these withdrawals, they would rush to the scene and whoever it was that had tried to make this withdrawal was long gone. When they pulled the security footage from these three different ATMs, the person that was making these withdrawals was a man wearing a ski mask and big sunglasses, so they had no way to identify him. After these withdrawals, the account went silent for over a week, and in that time, there was no word from Samantha. Then on March 7th, more withdrawals were made, but they were in Arizona, and then New Mexico, and then in Texas. Again, authorities would rush to these ATMs, but they would get there right after the masked man with sunglasses had just left. But there was a break this time. In but I mean, my thing was, wouldn't it be more smart to have like an agent around? Just, you have 300,000 people, you get what I'm saying? Have those people around the ATMs and be on the lookout for somebody with those ski masks and sunglasses. Like, ain't no rent. Not too many people are walking up to an ATM with ski masks and sunglasses. Have people stake out the ATMs, and then when they when he comes to withdraw money, get them. I mean, I mean that makes more sense to me. I don't know. Maybe that's kind of a stupid plan. But if you have three hundred thousand people, that's more than enough people to kind of like branch out and and uh, take a look at the ATMs to catch the guy that may have taken Samantha. It's always hits me in the feels when people lose people in this horrible way. Yeah, that's true. It it, it does suck. Fingerprint check them, yeah. Oh, yeah, that too. I don't know if he's wearing gloves or not, but finger check the ATM. I'm pretty sure he's pressing buttons or something. I was just about a stun gun last night. Some guy at neighborhood Walmart was stalking me yesterday. Yeah, man, you need tasers. You need pepper spray. You need weapons, man. I encourage people to carry at least something to try to give you a fighting chance if something like this happens to you. Because imagine if Samantha was carrying a gun, man, and he climbed through that window, bruh, and she would have blasted him. She would have been fine. He would have been he would have been the one gone, bro. You know what I'm saying? It'd have been her life saved. She could have continued working and stuff like that. But like you gotta have something. If if you're not comfortable with a gun, get a a, a pepper spray, a knife, a, a taser, or something, uh I don't know, a, a a poison dart. Get something, man. I don't care. Just have something ready. A bat, golf club, just in case you need it. There's gotta be someone who knows her or was close to her. You think so? I feel like I don't know. Because maybe, I mean, it could have been someone she known, but I don't feel like it was. Only because she was scared. Like, the way she was acting, it wouldn't, it didn't feel like it would be somebody that she knew. But then again, you never know. I don't know. I don't think there's much details to go off of besides the camera thing where she said she got scared and stepped back. She looked, because she, well, the way he said it was, 
Like she looked at him to acknowledge the order. Like usually when you see somebody, you're like, oh, hey, like, you know, how's it doing? What's up? Like, how you doing? But if she just looked, kind of like acknowledged the order and went back to work, I don't feel like she knew the person. Maybe it was somebody that knew her, but she didn't know them. Or maybe it was somebody that frequented, like frequented or frequently uh, visit the common grounds and then end up, you know, just being a little weird stalker. But who knows? I had someone with a gun in their hoodie stare at me at night in a gas station when it scares. Yeah, see. Yeah, that's why your boy. Your one of these surveillance videos from one of the Texas ATMs, they spotted the car this guy was getting into before he left. And it was a small sedan. It was a white Ford Focus. And they saw him leave going east on a Texas highway. And so authorities in Texas were told to look out for this particular car in this part of Texas. And sure enough, on March 13th, a Texas patrolman spotted the car sitting in a hotel parking lot. He waited nearby until a man in his 30s walked out of one of the hotel rooms, walked down and got inside the car. And then this patrolman just kind of followed him and looked for any reason to pull him over. And as he had his radar gun on this guy, he noticed he was going two miles per hour above the speed limit. And so he pulled him over. The patrolman <laughs> got out, he walked up to the driver's side window. The window was already down. The man was very calm. The patrolman asked him for his license and the guy handed him an Alaskan license. His name was Israel Keys. He was 34 years old yep, and he lived him. in Anchorage. It's him. The patrolman knew this was the guy. He called in backup and before long they were searching Keys' car and in the trunk they found a ski mask along with other clothes that matched the description of the guy who was making the draws from these different ATMs. They also found a gun as well as Samantha's cell phone and debit card. There After Keys was arrested and was brought into custody, he denied having any involvement with Samantha's disappearance. Look at this dude, bruh. He looked like an anorexic Neo from the Matrix, bruh. Look at this dude, bruh. Just a loser, a nerd. He got no chin, like no jawline, bruh. He just looked like his face is just smashed in. He looked like that one actor. Can't think of his name. He'd be playing some comedy movies sometime. Like, but this bro just he a little weird looking, little man dark looking, little doofen smirk from like Phineas and Ferb looking dude. He just looked creepy, bro. Like, he just. He like eat Cheeto puffs and then wipe the crumbs on his shirt and he'd be watching like weird shit at night. Like he watched the infomercials at nighttime or something. He just weird. Like he just drink like Red Bull with like a bendy straw or something. Like he just do something weird. You know what I'm saying? Like he just drink dip spit or something. I don't know. It is. He got that. It's like his nose is not even real. It look like it's fake. Like he just stuck it on there. Like the nose came with the glasses or something. Like I don't know, bro. But that's just my opinion, bro. He, he is a little weird, a little thing. But after being presented with the overwhelming evidence that suggested otherwise, he caved and said, yes, he would tell them the full story of what happened to Samantha, but they had to get him an Americano coffee, a peanut butter Snickers, and a cigar. Once he had said items, he began to speak. And what he said was so- I Told you, didn't I say he's a weirdo? Did you, hear, did you hear what his request was for him to talk? debit card. After Keyes was arrested and was brought into custody, he denied having any involvement with Samantha's disappearance. But after being presented with the overwhelming evidence that suggested otherwise, he caved and said yes, he would tell them the full story of what happened to Samantha, but they had to get him an Americano coffee, a peanut butter Snickers, and a cigar. Once he had said items, he began to speak. And what he said was so disturbing and so graphic the FBI still has not released the full transcript of his confession. Here is the version of events based on what was made public. On February 1st, 2012, Keyes decided he was going to rob the Common Grounds coffee kiosk. He walked up to the window, expecting there to be some teenager working inside, and he was right. It was Samantha. He asked her for an Americano, and while she turned to make his drink, suddenly his plan changed. Not only was he going to steal money from inside of this coffee shop, he decided he was going to steal Samantha from this coffee shop. When she turned back with his drink and handed it to him, he discreetly pulled his gun out and aimed it at her and told her this was a robbery. That's when she backed up and put her hands up and then she turned around, he tied her hands, he jumped back inside and then he said after he shut the window, he jammed napkins inside of her mouth so she couldn't make any sound. So and then he marched her out the door, outside, into his car and they took off. Once they were in the vehicle, he pulled the napkins out of her mouth and he told her if she tried to escape or if she tried to flag anybody down, 
down that he would just kill her. And so he said she was very obedient. She was obviously very scared, but she was trying to do her best to stay composed. At some point, Keyes reached over and took her phone and sent that text message to her boyfriend Told informing you. him that she was going to be spending a couple of days with friends and that he should tell her father. And then Keyes told Samantha he was going to be holding her hostage and trying to extract some ransom money. Samantha told Keyes that her family was very poor and that he wouldn't get much money out of them. To which Keyes said, don't worry about it. I know they'll raise money and they'll come up with it somehow. Then they drove around Anchorage for several hours, periodically stopping so Samantha could get out and relieve herself, other times so Keyes could smoke a cigar. Then around midnight, Keyes made his way back to his house and he pulled into the driveway and he turned to Samantha and he had her go in the back seat and lie down. Then he put some tarps over her and he told her if she tried to escape, he would kill her. And then Keyes got out and he walked inside of his house where his 10 year old daughter and his girlfriend were fast asleep. And in just a few hours, Keyes and his daughter were scheduled to go to New Orleans for a two week long luxury cruise. Keyes left his house and went back to his car. He put a blindfold on Samantha and then led her down the driveway to his shed. Once inside, he sat her down on an upturned bucket in the back of the shed. And then he put a rope around her neck and he anchored each end of the rope to the wall. So she was pinned to the wall. Then Keyes turned his radio all the way up to make sure it masked any noise she might make, even though he reminded her repeatedly that if she made any noise he would just kill her and by and large she was very obedient and then he gave her a couple of cigarettes to smoke and told her it was going to be just fine to just chill out that he was going to get the ransom money from their family and then as soon as that was done he would let her go he turned on some space heaters to keep the space warm and then he left and locked the door he walked back into his house and double checked that his daughter and his girlfriend were still asleep you saw they photo. were afterwards he started drinking some wine and relaxing and then after a little while he got a cup of water and he went back out to the shed he went inside and he gave the water to Samantha and he said Samantha was very composed she was obviously frightened but she asked him did you speak to my father did you figure out the ransom situation and Keyes told her that yes I talked to your father everything's working out fine he's gonna raise the money we're gonna get you out of here everything's going exactly to plan after that he walked up to Samantha and he unscrewed the two anchors that were holding that rope up against her throat and then he cut the zip ties on her wrist allowing her to relax and sit forward and just kind of be at ease for a second and it was very obvious that Samantha was relieved. Her nightmare was about to be what over. The but then seconds later, Keyes grabbed her really aggressively and tied her up all over again, this time much more thoroughly and much more tightly. It had been a cruel trick. When he cut her handcuffs and undid her necktie, he just wanted to see what she would do if she thought she was being let go. When in reality, he was never going to let her go. There was no ransom. Wow. He had not spoken to her father. It was all a big lie. Keyes told investigators that as he was tying her up for that second time, he looked at her face and she had this look of total resignation. He said she knew what was about to happen to her. After Keyes tied her up, wow. he left the shed and locked it behind him. He went inside to check one more time to make sure his 10 year old daughter and his girlfriend were still asleep. When they were, he went back to the shed, he opened it up, he went inside, and this time when he stepped inside, it smelled like urine and sweat, and he looked down at Samantha and she was terrified. He walked up to her and he began to assault her. And then after he was done, he was standing over her, getting his clothes back on, and Samantha very stoically looks up at him and says, are you going to kill me? And he says, yes, I am. As he put on wow. his leather gloves, she tried to talk him out of it, but he said there was no other way. Keyes would tell investigators that he was very impressed with Samantha's bravery. Shortly before 4 a.m., Keyes drove a knife into Samantha's back before choking her until she stopped moving. He told investigators that she never made a sound. After she was dead, Keyes left the shed and locked it behind him. He went into his house, he took a shower. Afterwards, he woke up his daughter and told her to start getting ready because they were leaving soon for the airport. While his daughter was getting ready, Keyes went back out to the shed, he went inside, he rolled Samantha's body up in a tarp and pushed her towards the back. He unplugged the space heaters, turned off the lights, turned off the music, and then double locked the shed and went back inside the house to make his daughter breakfast. At 5 a.m., a cab showed up at the house and Keyes and his daughter hopped inside and they made their way to the airport and then on to New Orleans where they went on their two week long vacation. After they got back, Keyes went inside of his shed. He unrolled Samantha from her tarp and by his account, she still looked fairly lively. And so he dressed her in some new clothes. He put lots of makeup on her face. He braided her hair and then he stitched her eyelids open. So it gave the impression she was alive and alert. And then he held up a copy of the Anchorage Daily News next to her and then took several photos photos creating that proof of life photo for the ransom note. If you want to see this photo, you can Google it, but that's up to you. After he took these pictures, he chopped her body up into pieces and then disposed of her in a nearby frozen lake. It would turn out Samantha was not Israel Keyes' first victim. 
He was in fact a serial killer who specifically preyed on completely random people because he enjoyed watching them die. Over the years, he had hid what he called kill kits all over the United States, which were these caches filled with weapons and other tools designed to capture and kill people. This way, no matter where he was in the country, when he had an urge to go kill someone, he would just go to his nearest kill kit, dig it up, and then go target a random stranger. And he didn't care if you were young, old, big, small, male, female, alone, or in a group, everyone was a target of opportunity. Keyes told investigators that as soon as he saw Samantha right, inside of that coffee kiosk, instantly he knew he was going to kill her. Everything about the ransom, the robbery, all of it was just a lie to keep her in line, to give her some hope Jeez. that she might get out of this alive. Jesus when Christ. in reality, the second she walked outside of the doors of that kiosk, she was dead. He's admitted to killing Samantha as well as an older couple up in Vermont, but he would take his own life in a jail cell in December of 2012 before he named wow. any of his other victims. What a and so to this day, we have no idea how many people he killed. The best guess is 11 based on a drawing he made in his jail cell but that's just a guess. So that's gonna do it, guys. If you found the secret Dang, in today's video, man. let us know in the comments what it is and where you found it, so give us the timestamp. And if you're the first to do that, we will pin you at the top of the comments section. If you enjoyed today's video and you haven't done this already, please replace the like button's eye drops with Egyptian fox urine. Also, please subscribe to our channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly three or four video uploads. If you want to get in touch with me, you can direct message me on Instagram or on Twitter. My username for both platforms is the same. It's John Ballin 416 I also have a ton of content over on TikTok where my username is Mr. Ballin. I also have a second YouTube channel called Mr. Ballin Shorts where I post random short videos and live lost episodes. If you have a story suggestion, please submit it to our subreddit just called Mr. Ballin. It's linked in the description below. So whether I see you on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Reddit, YouTube, or some combination, just know that I really appreciate your support. And until next time, that's going to do it. See ya. Well. Damn, man. Also, just a coincidence that happened to land on Samantha. So we're just going to leave it there. What's up, Wolf Gecko? Man, like, so that whole time they're raising that money. When he sent that picture, she was already dead. And he, who, do you know how insane and crazy you have to be to buy all those weapons and spread them around around the countries? Which means you just travel just to maybe even get the the slightest itch or the urge to kill somebody, and you know where to go. You know the exact, excuse me, the exact coordinates to go to get those weapons and kill somebody. Like, he went there for a coffee and was like, mm, you know what? I'm going to kill you later on. And the fact that she sat there, me personally, man, if you capture me, I'm just going to assume that you're going to kill me. And if you're taking me to your house and I'm, or you're taking me somewhere where I'm in a neighborhood, I'm yelling for help because somebody's going to come outside. And if you panic and shoot me, then your kids and wife or your girlfriend are going to know you're a murderer and you're going to go to jail regardless. But my thing is, if you're all about that, you like to see people die and stuff like that, and you're you're just hardcore killer, like why are you why are you go and kill yourself? Like these are the people that are just like ultimate like just just cowards, man. Like if you're gonna do all that and you just you know you're Mr. Bad Guy, tough guy, don't kill yourself. Just wait out the whole sentence or you know get what's coming to you. Why take the easy way out? But oh um, man, this is. One of many that's probably have suffered from what she have an older couple, like old people, wasn't bothering nobody. He killed them, and he drew. He couldn't even bring himself to talk about it because he knew what he was doing was wrong, and he just drew those eleven. So maybe there is eleven. Maybe there's bodies that have been discovered where they didn't know who did what, and it probably was him. Or no telling how many bodies are left around the world that haven't been discovered yet due to serial killers that may or may not have been named yet. So. If you take anything from this video, at least take the fact that a weapon is needed here in this world. No matter where you are, it brings something, a fork, spoon, just something that you can be able to defend yourself. I always stay with the mindset, like if I'm getting robbed, I'm just going to assume that you're going to kill me anyway and I'm just going to have to fight for my life. One thing you're going to say, you can't say about me is just, I'm just going to sit there and let you kill me, bruh, because that's not going to happen. So if you can and you can't help it, pepper spray, taser, baseball bat, uh, a 
a, a knife that's authorized, anything. Just just have something, man. Because if you, you me personally, if you're going to climb through that little ass window, I would have probably grabbed you and wrestled you and, and did the best that I could. You're not about to just take me for ransom and just, I'm just not going to let you just tie me up like that, bro. And then you go put me under a tarp and tell me if I move, you're going to kill me. Like, you've been threatening me the whole time, you know what I'm saying? Like, I might as well just take my chances and run for it. I'm not about to take your word for it because you're going to kill me. Like, people are like, oh, if you give me your money, I won't shoot you. Like, no. Some people give up the money and still get shot. What happened to hunting animals? I mean, you can still hunt animals, but humans, animals kill because they have to, but humans kill just because they want to. And that's why I never understood when people call serial killers animals because they're not the same thing. Animals kill because they have to, and humans kill because they feel like it. Uh, and sometimes, not all humans, but sometimes majority of humans that I'm talking about, the criminal, criminalized humans kill because they want to, not the people that are defending themselves. Because, you know, all life is precious, but at the end of the day, my life is important, more important than anybody that's trying to take mine. Uh, they got a family just like I do, but if it's between me and you, it's going to be you every time, chief. <laughs> I would see that dude instantly and know he was wrong. I could see that BS a mile away. Yeah, like, he just looked shady, like, and the fact that you have a, I don't, I don't understand, like, people always say, like, oh, like, you have a daughter and a girlfriend, you're out there killing people. You already have a family, you already have a home. You obviously must have a good job because you can afford all them damn weapons, bro. He had a weapon, cat. weapons ain't cheap, bro. So he he had some kind of money, and now his daughter's living without a dad, and she's going to have to live with the fact that her daddy was a known serial killer that's probably killed 11 or more people. Animals yeet to eat. Dang. But yeah, man, that's going to do it for today's stream. I think that's a, wouldn't say a good video to end it on, but that's a good kind of like story to end it on, give you something to think about. Uh, make some good choices and just kind of just let you sit there and thought and see what kind of world that we actually live in where people actually do things like this. Like a lot of people leave how leave the house not knowing it's probably the last time they're going to ever be seen again. Like I bet the dad didn't realize her going to work will be the last time that he'll hear her daughter's voice or see her daughter ever again. And then I know the husband uh, was even or the boyfriend was even worse because. They got in an argument, and that was the last thing that they said to each other. So they probably said some hateful stuff, and sh no longer can see them again. So that's deep. Kind of lost my motivation. I was going to do another video, but I was just like, uh, yeah. How do people not notice people before they even get close? I don't know. Like she said, she she gave him the uh, she gave him the uh, drink, and she came back and she pulled out a gun. Well, some people robbing don't want to kill, but sometimes they have to. I mean, don't rob at all. That's the thing. Like, just get a job or collect cans or you know do something. Like, hey, I'll, I'll change our rake leaves for you or something. Like, why he, he obviously didn't need money if he had money if he had enough money for weapons like i just don't get that it's just he had two cars he had a truck and he had a ford focus like he, he don't need money be nice to see you react to some animal attack videos or something yeah i'll probably look into that probably sometime this week or so but I'm going to end it right here, guys. If you enjoyed the live stream, man, make sure you hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. If you guys are new to the channel, my name is Reprisal Zims, and welcome to the Crow's Nest. If you guys want to see any of these videos from Nukes Top 5, Mr. Ballin, or Mr. Nightmare, be sure you swoop down to the description box, call on that link, and go watch the videos in entirety. I'm going to be pausing and stopping and talking through the whole thing. Man, we started off pretty rough with the uh, Nukes Top 10. It was very scary, so if you guys haven't already, be sure you go back and check that out. It will probably will give you nightmares. I'll probably... Uh, advise you to watch it in the morning time because <laughs> I'm dead ass about to get off the stream and then go watch some cartoons uh, but yeah definitely right that will definitely keep the live streams coming uh, have a good one Zim thank you uh, thank you uh, Tobias or Tobias I don't know if I'm saying your name right but if I'm butchering it my bad but yeah man I'll try to keep these coming mostly on the weekends because on the weekdays I have work so I won't be able to uh, 
the live stream as much, but I'm going to keep trying to pre-record um, reaction videos. And I keep saying I'm going to imp uh, implement gameplays, but I don't know which game I want to implement for you guys to watch, or if you guys even want to watch gameplay videos, but I'm going to start going like back and forth and whatnot. Dang, I got a lot of freaking gas or something, bro. Good reactions. Thank you, Foxy. I appreciate it. See you next live stream. All right, Riley. Appreciate you stopping by. Another great live stream. Keep them coming. Thanks, nothing. I appreciate you. <clears throat> uh, bye, Zim. Bye, Foxy. Yeah, true, but some people are in debt. I mean, yeah. I mean, some people are in debt, but you don't have to rob people to get out of debt either. That's the misconception. Like, if you, there's always a way. There's not going to be like, oh, I'm broke. I have to rob people to get money. Like, there's always a way to get money. It might take you a minute, but there's always a way. You don't have to rob people to kill people and take the stuff in order you to make money. Make money, like I said, cut grass. You can legit go to people's house, older people homes that can't even uh, do stuff for themselves. And like, hey, you pay me to do this. I'll cut your grass. I'll water your grass. Like, there's ways to make money. You don't have to rob people. That's That's not my I don't know that's just my opinion I don't think you have to rob people in order to make a living for yourself it's like there's no other way there's always a way uh, gameplay would be sweet thank you Foxy if you have any game recommendations make sure you let me know damn you're online for 90 minutes yeah it was a minute it's all good almost it's gonna be another one I tried to do it a little bit later for you guys can catch up on stream but uh I couldn't uh, I can't stay up too late, I guess. It'll mess up my sleep schedule. So I tried to start at 12 this time. I started at like 10, 30, or 11 to get more people in. But some people may have, but some people didn't. No problem, James. I appreciate you. Thanks, Aiden, for stopping by. I appreciate you as well. I mean, yeah. I don't know. But that's just me. I wouldn't rob anything. Because, tech. I mean, you rob a bank, you're going to get... You probably won't get anything. Especially if you get... Like the the little blue ink thing, the little dye that they put on the money, and sometimes you're gonna get life since so I mean, it's I even it's not even worth it at that point. Me personally, I'll just go city to city and just be like a drifter and see what I can make out of it. Motor combat reaction? What do you mean? What do you mean motor combat reaction? Like the game? I played that game already. I played motor combat. I have that gameplay on my channel. But it's cool. Metal Gear Solid 5. I have to see that. I don't think I have PlayStation. But yeah, I'll check it out. But just make sure you guys drop me some... Um, I'm going to uh, make a post after this live stream and see what kind of games you guys want. Usually I play like mostly like horror type games. I've never really played campaign type games. But I mean, it might be something new that people like to see. And just let you guys go. What up, Roya? Uh, Roy, was it Roya? Or Suzui? Roya? Loyata Suzui, what's up? Yeah, but yeah, thank you guys for stopping by. I greatly appreciate it. Make sure you guys have a really safe day or uh, weekend, whatever you guys are gonna do. Be aware of your surroundings, all that good stuff. Make sure you utilize the red flags, and it will come in handy. Eventually, I'm gonna make merchandise, and uh, we can do a uh, little nightmares. Oh yeah, I gotta play that too. I haven't played little nightmares. Uh, but I was gonna say. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I talk a lot. I just want to make sure everybody's good to go and make sure everybody's safe and whatnot. But yeah, man, keep doing what you guys are doing and the videos will keep coming. Uh, thank you guys again for watching. Peace.